Hi y'all, I'm Jean from Jiva Yoga Center on Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. Today we're gonna to practice a 60 minute vinyasa flow. So let's get started. We'll start in child's pose. You can bring your big toes together and either set your knees wide or your knees together. Whatever feels right today. Go ahead and reach your arms out long in front of you. And today our assistant is going to be Merle, my dog. So he'll be in and out. <laughs> Take the time here to connect to your breath. And start to take deep breaths in through your nose and out through your nose. As you inhale, really fill up the back side of your body. Feel the expansion, the space. And each time that you breathe out, draw the pit of your belly in and up. Continue that slow, rhythmic breath in through the nose and out through your nose. Setting an intention for this practice today, possibly to just let everything kind of stay outside of your mat space for this period of time. And let your focus just drop internally. Notice how you feel. Notice any anxious or anxiety running you right now and just practice every time you breathe out, just letting that soften. Your next inhale will be a little deeper. And as you breathe out, open your mouth and audibly just ha. Do that again. Deep inhale. Ha. Now pull forward onto your hands and knees as you inhale and come right into cow pose. So draw the belly down, chin up. And breathe out, press down in your palms, tuck your chin, squeeze your belly and cat back. Keep doing these two motions, letting your breath kind of lead the way of your movements. If there's any extra movements you'd like to practice in these cat cow forms, I want you to do that. Explore. Even closing your eyes can take this more internal. Just a few more rounds of cat cow. And as you breathe in this next time, Curl all 10 toes under, and send your hips high for downward facing dog. And right away, take the breath, ride it in, fill up. And as you exhale, just let your heels soften, kind of get heavy. So remember your heels don't have to touch the ground, thankfully. Just let the back of the legs feel that good, juicy stretch. Spread your fingers. Press into each one of your fingertip pads. And breathe deeply, fill and empty. And then we'll bring feet a little closer together in down dog. Sweep your right leg to the sky. And go ahead and bend the knee in the air and allow the hip to kind of passively open. See the heel on the ground and let it soften. Let it sink down as much as that's comfortable and open up the right knee a little bit more. And just two full breaths, strong in the arms, push into the palms. One more big breath. And exhale. And now straighten out your right leg, just reach long. Step forward right between your hands. Keep the back knee lifted, just kind of shift forward and backwards, coming in and out of this movement, the tip opener and land somewhere in the center. And we'll take the right arm right up towards the ceiling. If you can look up and see your top fingers do that, if your neck is okay with this. And breathe, open up wide across your chest. Back leg is really strong. Can you engage the quads a little more? Just hug into the bones. 
One more deep breath. As your breath exits, plant your palms, step back, downward facing dog pose. Big breath here. Set the feet a little closer together. Left leg goes up this time. Stretch it long and bend your knee, open up your hip. And do that on this heel. Let the right heel just kind of sink. Like I noticed that more in my whole inner thigh stretch, the more I can drop the heel and lift the knee. Breathe into that space. Give it a good deep breath. And we'll straighten out your right leg, level your hips. Step your foot quietly right between your hips. And find your way for comfortable posture here. You might shift in and out, up and down. And we'll land right palm on the ground or fingers, left arm to the sky. Stretch up. Some days my shoulder doesn't really enjoy that kind of action in the shoulder, so I take my hand to my back and rotate the torso that way. It's mostly about your shoulder twisting, shoulder girl twisting. Take one more deep breath. And as you exhale, again, step back up, downward facing dog pose. As your inhale comes, come into high plank position, shoulders over your wrists, and pull the belly in. Activate your thigh bones. Breathe in fully. And we'll lower down slowly. So hug the elbows in. Come all the way down to the floor. Extend your legs long. Feet can be a little wider. They can be together. Cobra pose. So lift your heart. Hug the elbows in. And let the chest pull forward. Ground all of your toes on the ground. Take two deep breaths. Draw the pit of your belly in as you exhale. Maybe one more inhale, elevate a little more. Breathe out, lower your forehead down and curl all your toes under. So this can be done with straight legs or bent knees. But breathe into a high plank position. We'll go right back to downward facing dog. Take one big breath in. Open up your mouth, empty it out. Look to your hands. Big step right to the top of your mat. Take a halfway lift, long in your spine. Bow forward, let the chin surrender to your chest. Sweep up, Tadasana, mountain pose. Keep your arms up high. We're going to flow right back down as you breathe out, fold from the hips. Come to a halfway lift, long in your spine. Step back, high plank. Lower down either halfway or all the way. Upward dog, cobra pose, you choose. We'll meet back in a downward facing them. Deep breath in. Big exhale. And spread your fingers and breathe. Allow the hips to pull back as you exhale. Let's take one more deep breath. Empty it all the way out. Look forward. Step up or float jump. Halfway lift when your feet land. Bow in. Sweep up to the asana. Come all the way up to standing. Fold right back down with your exhalation. Lead to a long spine. High and low push up. It's always your choice. Cobra or upward facing dog. Really tone the legs, broaden the chest. Downward facing dog. You breathe right away. Fill and empty. Breathe into the whole upper back. Feel it expand, really broaden. As you exhale, pull the low belly in and up. Create that strength. One more breath. To an exhale. Look forward, step or jump. Top of your mat, halfway lift, long spine. Bow. Just rise up, Tadasana. Big stretch high, a little hint of a back bend. Fold forward, forward fold. And one more sun A, halfway lift, long in your spine. Chaturanga, so you move through. Take your time, follow the breathing, cobra or up dog. Hips go high, downward facing dog. Big inhale. 
bigger exhale. One more deep inhale, big exhale. Look forward, feet up to the top of your mat, halfway lift, long spine. Bow. Sweep up, Tadasana. Long, strong arms. Hands right by your side, Sama Siddhi. Then go Sun B. Bend your knees, sink your hips, chair pose. Sweep your arms up. We'll land here, let the hips draw back and down. So chair pose, depending on your hips each day, your feet can go a little bit apart. You can bring your big toes a little closer. But you test the waters and breathe here. Sink your hips down. Give it a breath, lift your heart a little higher. And we'll fold, hands right by your feet. Tuck in your chin. Come to a halfway lift, long in your spine. High and low push up. Inhale to your back bend. Toe on the legs, breathe. Downward facing down. Right foot steps forward. Warrior one. So use your leg, ground them first. Rise up. We'll sink in. So allow the hips to sink deeply. And find a little more length in your spine. Create it through your breathing. Soften your shoulders. Take a big inhale. Begin to turn the torso, your shoulders towards the window, the front of your rim. Sink in. Let's give it one more big breath. Plant your palms. High to low push up pose. Forward into up dog. Hips go high. Downward face. Left foot forward. Warrior one. So ground. Rise up. Make any adjustments in the width of your legs. Sink down into the front knee. Really firm up your back leg. Root the outer edge of your back foot. Down into the floor. Sink into that leg. Let's breathe. Pull up and back. Stay here and sink. Give it one more big breath. Hands down. High to low push up. Pull forward into your upper facing dog. Lift your chest. Downward facing dog. Right away you breathe. Empty. Bend your knees if it feels welcome. Let the hips pull back. Create some more space in the body. We'll take one more big breath. Empty it all out. Look forward. You can step or you can jump. Halfway lift. Let's fold. Chair posture. Sink your hips. Arms sweep up. Let the hips pull back and down this time. So we're going to come up on the tippy toes. Keeping your gaze somewhere in the horizon. Lift your heels. Lift your knees. Breathe in. As you lower the heels down, exhale, fold forward. Come to a halfway lift, long in your spine. Chaturanga. Come forward into your upward facing bow. Downward facing. Right foot forward, warrior one. Just one breath this time, so rise up, breathe in. Hands down, move through your high and low push up. Open your way, cobra or up dog. Downward facing, left side, step, one breath, warrior one, reach up, chaturanga. If you need extra time, please take it. Follow your breathing, inhale to open, exhale, down down. Right away you breathe, and empty. Two more breaths. Your breathing bring you back to this moment. Calm down your system, the nervous system. One more big breath. Empty it all. Move to your hands. Feet to the top. Halfway lift. Let's bow. Chair pulls. Sink down, sweep up. One more round. Bow forward. There's an option. Halfway lift. You can move through a crow pose, so set your knees into your arms, gaze forward, pull the heels up towards your hips. So use your fingertips as ways to stabilize this pose. A great option is also Malasana pose, sinking the hips down between the heels. If you're
You're in a crow pose. Stay for about two. Three. One more big inhale. And you can either step back or push back. Chaturanga. Go forward into upward facing dog. Send your hips up high. Downward facing dog. Stay here and breathe. Big, big exhale. Let the feet a tad closer. Right leg, send it up to the sky and breathe in. Draw your knee to your right upper arm as you exhale. Come forward and touch. Good. Send your leg up high. Bring it to the left side. Twist across. See if you can touch the left elbow. Send your leg up high. Bring that knee right into your nose. Push into the floor like creating a cat back. Step your foot between your hands. Crescent lunge. So sweep up. Drop into your legs. You can even bend the back knee and straighten it a couple of times. Just kind of get into that left hip. Then land in a depth that you feel comfortable. A little bit of trepidation, holding. And pull the torso up long. Stretch out the fingertips. Reach them up towards the ceiling. Let's take a deep breath here. And a big exhale, we twist to the right. Hook your left elbow on your thigh. And use your palms to press to rotate your torso. Some of you may know other options in this posture for you, like maybe opening your arms. Some of you might go towards a bind. None of that's needed. You could drop your knee and press your palms together. I think it feels fabulous. Just deepen your breath here. Each time you breathe out, twist this right side belly in and twist. Give it two more breaths wherever you are. One more deep breath in. Big exhale. Set the knees on the ground, lift it up. Look down, ground your back foot, warrior two pose. So sink down into your front knee. And set your gaze, your drishti, right over your front fingertips. And sink down a little more and open your knee to the right. And spin the palm, reverse this warrior. Stay here as you exhale. Use your back leg firm and strong to ground and reach to the fingers. Good. Take one more big breath. We're going to frame the front foot. Step back to a high push up. And lower down, chaturanga. Open upward facing up. Send your hips high. Ha. Big breath here. Empty it out. Bring the feet a little closer again. Sweep your left leg to the sky. Let's bring the knee to your upper left arm. Touch into that elbow, squeeze. Send the leg up high. Cross the body to the right side. Create a twist, hug in. Take it back up to the ceiling. Draw the knee into your nose. And again, push into the palms. Really go for the cat back. Very gracefully step between your hands. Rise to crescent lunge with an inhale. Sink into your legs. Then again, feel free to kind of move up and down. Kind of get into this right hip, the flexor, quads, and then we'll breathe and pull a little more length. Ha. Give it a deep breath here. Prayer twist to your left side. Hook your right elbow on your thigh. If the back leg stays up, activate it more. Send the heel back, engage your quad, and twist. Big, big breaths. So I want you to move through any variations that you would like right now. This could be amazing. This could be amazing. Open arms. Wherever you are, breathe for three. Two. One more big breath. Tone in the belly. Look down. Back heel grounds, warrior two. Come up. Sink into the front knee. Again, set your eyes. Open your front fingertips. Practice a soft gaze, a soft drishti. And sink in a little bit more. Spin the front palm. Reverse your warrior pull back. Just stay here, drop into the leg a little deeper. Give it one more breath. Frame your front foot. Let's move from high to low push up. 
And if you ever want to skip this, stay in a high plank. And everybody will meet back together again in downward facing dog. That works amazing. Just deep breaths. Ha. Getting one more breath in. Do a big exhale. Look forward. Jump or step. Right to the top of your mat. Halfway lift. Bow in. Chair pose. Sink down. Rise up. Let's go right to chair twist to the right side. Left elbow hooks. Palm to palm, possibly again. So important, you can see me on this video, you can catch me if my right hip draws back, so common. So draw the right knee forward and see if you can't bring the feet, the knees more parallel. The twisting is coming from your shoulder girl. And just breathe deeply. Keep the hips stable, belly tone, twist. You could stay with, come to open arms. You can take side crow. If you want to add a little more zest, you go for it. Let's keep the hips low and breathe. For two, let's take the hips a little bit more. One more breath. Keep your hips low in chair pose. Inhale, arms sweep up, chair. Stay in chair, exhale. You got this, give it one more breath. Hands down, fold forward, straight legs. Halfway lifts. Open up your mouth, stick out your tongue. Ah -ha. Chair pose, Utkatasana. Sweep the arms up. Allow the hips to pull back and down. Give it a good breath, find your length, create it. Twist to the left side. Hook your elbow. Good. Sink down, check out your knees. You may have to bump the right hip back, left knee forward. Come into any version that you would like right now. For three, sink and exhale. Two, one more deep breath, but stay on your exhalation, please, and then come back to chair pose, hips low. Exhale, stay and sink. One more big inhale. Hands come down, good job, fold forward. <clears throat> Halfway lift, separate your feet about two fists apart. Catch your peace fingers to your big toes from the inside of the big toes. And breathe and pull along in the spine. Let's bow. And really let the head release. You might even shake it out a little bit. If your elbows are bent, give them a little hug in towards your outer shins. Deep breathe. Forward folding postures are tremendous ways to calm down and cool down our nervous system and our hearts. Really go right into that for two more breaths. Release the big toes. Come along in your spine and heel toe your feet right back together. Take your hands on your hips and come your legs strong or bent. Long spine, rise up, hands to the sky. Bring your hands right by your side. Samasta Dihi. Pause here. Notice how you feel. Just breathe in, pull. Let's inhale, sweep your arms up high. As if you were folding over a big white picket fence, hinge from your hips and fold over and in. Halfway lifts. Low push up. So move through this your way. You can take on cobra, you can take on upward facing dog, but take it slow, breathe, and we'll meet back in a downward facing dog. Breathe in, please. Ha. Set the feet a little closer together, if they're not yet. Right leg goes to the sky. Bend your right knee, let your hip open. You can look under your right shoulder. Press down in your left palm, so keep that left arm strong. Option A, great place to be. If you want to flip your dog, go slowly. So set your foot down, spin around so your heart, belly, hips, press up to the ceiling. I prefer to keep my left leg straight in this flip dog. It gives my shoulder a little more ease. A lot of people prefer to bring their feet parallel like so. So you decide. You are your own teacher here. So just find your breath again, lift your hips. One. 
complete for three, two, little more oomph, hips rise up, one more breath, and as you exhale, you can lower the hips down, come to high plank position, feet zip up together, we're going to take the right hand more forward a bit, and roll over to your right side plank, which can look a lot of different ways to everybody, you can splay the feet, drop a leg, plant your rock, left foot on the ground, lift your hips, you can stack, <laughs> so you choose, lift a leg for four, good, three, hips high, two, one more breath, look down, you're pressed, aren't you, Marley? come to high plank, all the way down to an opening, that's down dog, isn't it, pull forward into upward facing dog, we'll meet back and downward facing dog, Breathe, please. Big exhale. Send the left leg up to the sky. Bend the knee, open your hip. So as you remember, you can stay here. We embrace this. Or slowly flip your dog. Left foot comes down. Activate your legs. Lift your hips. Breathe. Let your breath create a little bit more of this natural back bending, a little more space for two, one, down, high plank position. Take your time to set it up, legs strong. Left palm comes to the center, roll to the left side plank. And again, your rendition can be different on the side. Eyes can go up to the top hands. Use the bottom foot, the pinky toe side edge of your bottom foot to anchor, to lift the hips. So you're actually using your outer hip, your IT band, your glute medius to help your hips go higher. Take one more breath. And we'll look down, make your way to high plank pose. Breathe in high plank, lower down chaturanga. An upward facing dog or cobra. Hips go high. Ha, dog. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. One more deep breath in. Empty it all. Look to your hands. Feet come to the top of your mat. Halfway lift. Please bow. Chair pose. Drop your hips. Rise your arms up. And let the hips pull down. Those of you guys that have been in my classes know what's coming next, yeah? Just let the hips sink down. Maybe the knees have to open up. Navasana, boat pose. So let the hips land. Pull the feet up, maybe in line with your knees. If your hips feel pretty zesty, you can straighten your legs. I prefer this. <laughs> so let's breathe in. Lift your arms up to the sky. Keep lifting your chest. Exhale, come down to a low boat. So hug in your core. Inhale, come up high boat. Exhale. Low boat. Inhale, high boat. Low boat. Exhale. One more time. High boat. Lift up. Come down to a low boat. Hover here. Strong crisscross. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Lower your head down. Wah. Hug your knees into your chest. And just take a good breath into your back body. Really nice. I'm going to rock and roll. Come up to your toes. Back to your shoulders. Come up to your toes. Back to shoulders. One more time. Come up. We'll stay up and cross your ankles. Option would be to take the palms down. Shift forward. You can step back. You can jump back. You can crawl back. However you do, lower it down. And we'll meet in a downward facing dog. So however you get there is absolutely perfect. Big breath here. Please exhale. So let's set the feet again a little closer. Sweep your right leg up to the sky. And let's come forward and knee your upper right arm again. It's a great way to get into your core and your back leg. Take it up high. Bring you to cross your body to the left side. Twist and hug it. 
One more time, reach up, pull in the knee to your chest, round your back and quietly step warrior two. So set your feet, then come up, drop in, one. So press an anchor down into your feet and legs strong, and extend long from front to back. Sometimes we tend to reach a little far forward, so just kind of feel that in your positioning, and if you can reach back a little more, do. Breathe. In the palm, reverse this warrior, stretch back, sing in. Breathe into this right side body, side angle, come forward and down. A lot of ways to practice your side angle posture, elbow to the thigh. Bring your hand down to a floor, you can grab your block or whatever you're using as a block, place it underneath your hand. I like it on the inside of my foot because it helps keep my knee tracking over my second and third toe. We're all a little bit different though. So find your way, extend from fingers down to your heel. Just breathe in and out. You can stay like this, fabulous place to be. You can move into some sort of a variation like a half bind. If you'd like to full bind, you go. Just allow what you do Take you deeper into this experience, this posture. <clears throat> if you find you're struggling, then maybe back out a little bit. Find the ease within it. Breathe. Give this three more breaths wherever you are. Strong in your legs. Two. If you're in a bird of paradise or any other form, come back to with the posture with your left hand in your hip. Half moon. So if you like to use a block in half moon, bring it along. And it might be a couple steps. So we've been in this leg for a while, so you might need a little extra help to get there. And then set the hand under your shoulders. You can rise up on your fingertips. Good. Check out your standing foot, 12 o'clock, big toe rounds. Arm can go to the sky. Keep the left leg lifting as high or even higher than your hip. Keep that outer hip active. Breathe, please. So option could be a bind. You might bend your knee, and if you're lucky, you don't fall. <laughs> but keep the foot into the hand and let that create a little more rotation open in the hips and the shoulders. The gaze can make a big difference. Make sure you lose a little balance. Come right back. Let's take one more big, big breath. Exhale, release your foot. Left hand comes down. Soften your standing knee and extend your left leg to the sky. Walk your hands close to your right foot. Create like a, a more uh, narrow footing. You might bring your hands right by your foot. You could go to balance. Bring one hand or two hands to your right ankle. Activate the left leg in the air. Please breathe. Activate the leg in the air. Give it one more breath. Release the left foot down. Pull up. Right foot, step it back. Warrior two pose. So find your feet. Come all the way on upright. Ha! Ah, already it's a counter pose. So sink into this fresh new left leg. Activate your right leg. Good. Spin the palm. Reverse your warrior. Stretch up and go back. Sink into your front knee. Deep breath. Side angle. Come forward. And down. Remember your variations. And always, one side can be different than the other side. There are no yoga police on this video, I promise. So just find your way, what feels good right now? What allows you to breathe the most fully? Do that, breathe in. Twist as you breathe out. Any option from this position. Twist, open. Give it three more breaths. One more big breath in. Stay and exhale. Right hand's coming to the hip. Half moon is where we're gonna go. So set yourself up. You might bring the block out. You might do a couple little hops in. But launch off. Lift the right leg up. Standing knee can be just a slight, slight softening. So you can use the muscles of your leg to create your stability. 
you bite. It's a good day. I was able to bite from both sides. So kick into the hand. Open up your chest. Breathe, please, deeply. Twist open. Two more breaths. One more big breath in. Release your hold if you have it. Right hand comes down. Soften the knees so you can square off the hips. Then bring the hands down on the floor closer to your left leg. Drop your head and look up at your air, foot in the air. Just by seeing it, it might go a little higher. You can flirt with a little balance here. Some days it's super wobbly, but it's fun to practice. Practice hugging in. Pull the leg up high. Big, big breath. Hands down. Malasana. Squat position. So heels in, toes out. Wah. Let your hips drop. You can use your elbows into your knees. A lot of days you can make a block and sit underneath your hips like this. Any height. Two blocks, three blocks. Just close your eyes. Circulate three full Ujjayi breaths in and out through your nose. Checking in with how you feel right now. And one more deep breath. And release your hands down in front of you. Straighten your legs out and turn your feet so they're parallel. Sorry, Merly. Your feet about two fists apart. And we'll slide the palms face up right under the soles of your feet. He might be just out of the screen, but he's showing off his stretching again. And let's take a breath, halfway lift. And let's fold as you exhale. You can bend the knees a lot. That might feel really great in the low back. When you bend your knees, it takes a lot of pressure off your low back and your hamstrings. It still allows you to get into that full back line of stretch. Really, really deep. One more deep breath cycle. Release your hands. Lift your gaze, hands can be on your thighs or your hips will come up slowly. Reach up. Find a little hint of a back bend. We'll bring the hands by your side. Samasta Dihi. Ha. So bring the feet here about parallel. We're going to do some balance postures. So shift into the right leg. If you don't have a strap, you can use a towel as a strap for this next pose. But Right knee is going to lift. You can hang on to your right knee with your right hands. The tendency is to do that. You want to fall out. So activate the outer hip, the left hip. Pull it in. Right? You can go for peace fingers to your right big toe. Extend your leg out something, maybe straight, halfway straight. Or use your towel. Give you a little extra extension in your arm. Then press the ball of your foot forward into the hand with a towel. And then lift your chest. Breathe here. Set your gaze. Let your eyes focus at one place in a soft fashion. One more breath. Slowly open your leg out to the right. As you do that, let the shoulder roll more to the left to create a counter stability. You can keep your gaze forward. You can take your gaze over your shoulder. Maybe come out of it like that. You just come right back into it. It's a practice. Breathe. Exhale. Slowly bring your leg back to front. Lift from the heart. Good. So here's the trick. We're going to keep the leg straight. Release the arms to the sky. And if the knee is bent, bring it straight. Point your toes. Pull the belly in. Lift up and breathe. Awesome. Airplane posture. So take your time. You might get down in your standing leg. Send the right leg long behind you. Square off your hips. Reach through the arms. Reach through the fingers. For three, two, and one. So soften the raw left knee. Reach your arms out in front. We're going to step back and come around to your right for a plie. So heels in, toes out. Drop down into your hips. Then open up across your chest. Sort of funky, like do a little dance. That feels good. Sink the hips a little deeper, and the balm actually sticks back a little bit to get into the strength of your low back. Let's breathe here together. 
eagle, right arm under your left. As an option, arms are all wrapped up. As an option, palms can press. You can hug yourself. See where this lands. Drop into the legs nice and strong and breathe and lift your elbows. Give this one more breath. If you were in a Tai Chi yoga class here, where you are, turn your left foot forward. Slowly shift into the front knee. Pivot around so your hips are square. Eagle, right leg, up and over. It might take a few times. Just kind of give it a go. You can wrap the legs. Some people can wrap their foot around their shin. Some people keep the toe on the ground. It's no right or wrong way. As long as you're breathing. Sink the hips, lift the elbows. Just two more breaths. One more big inhale. And sink down, exhale. Feet land. Sweep your arms up. Sama Stitiki. Ha. Take a breath here. Stick out your tongue and ha. Let it go. Let's go side two. Left hand, left knee. Outer hips strong. Piece fingers or towel to the left big toe or all of your foot. Extend the leg out. You can keep the knee bent. Keep grounding the standing foot and tone up the standing leg. Lift your heart. Slowly open the leg out to the left. Whatever the degree, roll the right shoulder open. Possibly look over the right shoulder. Breathe, please. One more slow, deep breath. Bring it right back to center with an in-breath. Release your leg. If the knee's bent, bring it straight. Reach your arms up to the sky. Lift your leg. Give it one big breath. Lift it up. Airplane. It's a slow transition. Bend the knees. It's like you're in a slow motion movie here. Send your leg back. Heart pulls forward. Mm, give it another good breath in. Big exhale. Bend your standing knees. Step back to a left foot. Turn to your left. Plie A. So drop down. Forgive my back here. We're going to open up across the chest. Left arm under your right. Sink a little bit more into the legs. Pull the elbows up. Breathe out. Turn the right toes to the top of your mat, the front. Pivot around slow. The slower you go, the better. And eagle, left leg up and over. Wrap the legs around. Pop the foot to the floor. Let your eyes be focused. Breath focused. Take one more breath. Inhale, come up, feet land. Stretch your arms to the sky. Arms by your side. Samastitihi, which just means equal pose. So notice how you feel. Let's do one more balance posture. Tree pose. Shift it to your left foot. I'm going to pick the right foot up and place it somewhere on your left leg, either high or low. Palms to your heart center. Anjane mudra. Palms together. Open the knee. Good. You can take your gaze like a little higher than the floor. If it's on the floor, just start to work it up a bit. As you breathe, allow your heart to lift. So maybe the arms will be an extension of that. Any variation of your arms. I want you to feel free to express your tree. Deep breath. That standing leg tuned in, outer hip pulls in. Give this two more breaths. And switch sides. Just let the transition to side two be the counter pose. Left foot comes up. Outer hip draws in. Almost at your heart center to begin with. This time you shift your hands up a little bit. You interlace your fingers and spin the palms up towards the ceiling. And there it goes. 
three, three, two, one more big breath, and then we some stick to keep equal pose, feet on the ground, close your eyes, take a full breath in, full breath out, open the eyes, sweep your arms over your head, get a little taller, bow forward as you exhale, three, two, a halfway lift, let's move through high and low plank pose, so your way, Take on a cobra, take on an up dog, stay for a couple of breaths if it feels welcome. And we'll be back in a downward facing dog. Breathe in, breathe out. And step your right foot forward, pyramid pose. It's a little bit shorter front to back. You might enlist your blocks on either side of your front foot under your shoulders. And come up halfway, so find enough uplift so you can lengthen the spine and draw your hips back. It's like both of your thigh bones are pressing back pretty fast. You could stay like this for a bit. You could even soften the front knee if your hamstring is screaming. And then make your way forward over your front leg. Once you get to a bit as deep as you're going to go, let your head drop and fall in. Relax the back of your neck. Breathe deeply, please. We'll come up into a halfway lift here. Take your hands on your hips. Come your legs strong. Rise up to stand. Twisting triangle. Left arm. Reach it up towards the ceiling. Like the previous posture, if you want to keep the hips square, come forward. Long spine. Hand can cross over to the opposite side, place it on a little level, up level, even really high like this, and rotate open through the shoulders. Some days it's really nice to keep the hand at the low back and find a true rotation from your shoulder girdle. If it feels welcome, you can still continue this pulling of hips back. Send your right arm up to the sky. It's up to you. Breathe. Rotate. For three, twist, two, one more big breath, take it in, use your exhale to frame your front foot. You can step to down dog, you can step back and go to child's pose, you can move through a high and low push up, there's a little bit of everything for you. And all roads will lead back to downward facing dog. Take that breath in. And empty it all out. Left foot steps for pyramid pose. So again, grab your blocks if they were helpful. Separate your feet enough so you're not like on a balance beam so your hips can square off more easily. Lengthen and breathe. Jaw be soft. Three breaths. Two more. One more. If your legs active. If it helps you to soften the knee in the front, do. Hands on your hips, push down to come up. Twisting triangle. Reach your right fingers to the sky. Slowly hinge from your hips. So your legs are moving back pretty quickly, pretty strongly. And right hand can touch down to the block or the floor. It be on either side of your foot. Like I'm here and I think I want to change my footing, so it feels more natural to bring my foot just a little bit closer and wider. Gives my hamstring and hips a little more, a little more freedom. And rotate to the left. Let the movement from the crown of your head pull forward as opposed to looking over your shoulder because that will move your whole body. So 
to let the crown of your head pull straight forward and your hips pull back, your shoulders twist. Deep breath, twist a little more. Two more, twist and ring. One more, twist and ring. Look down, frame your foot. Make your way back into downward facing dog position. You can stay here, soften your knees, move around the hips, or come through to a high and low push up pose one more time. Upward facing dog. Back we go to down dog. Hmm. Move to your hands. We're going to step, walk, or jump. Your way to get to seated. Set your feet on the ground in front of you. And let's roll all the way down to the floor. Let's let your feet land. I want to make sure I was still recording. And we'll come right into bridge pose. So feet about hip width. Knees stack over the ankles. Round your heels, lift up. And then motion as your hips come up, roll under your shoulders. My favorite way is to press the upper arm bones down and elbows. The idea is to get more of a thoracic back bend. Some of y'all can hold on to your hands back here and give that same action. I want you to do that if you do. Otherwise, just press into the upper arms. Relax your throat. Gently press the back of your head into the floor. And you breathe. Straight up, hugging in on your legs to the midline, and kind of a pulling out of your heels. Really tune into the outer hips. Breathe. You can stay here. It's brilliant. You can set your hands for wheel pose. Palms flat, fingers face backwards. And as you inhale, press on up into wheel. A lot of days I lift my heels up off the ground to give my low back some space. You choose today. Wherever you are, breathe. Give it one more big breath. And we'll slowly come down. So when your shoulders are down, lift up on your tiptoes, tuck your pelvis under and just roll down through your spine. Let your hips land, take your feet up, and your arms up. Just relax your shoulders. You're in wheel, it felt really great on your wrists. Breathe. And we do two more rounds. So set your feet for bridge or go right up and set up for wheel. So ground your heels, lift your hips, tuck under your shoulders. Bring a lot of attention to your breathing and to your legs, hugging in. Breathe, open up the upper back. Stay there or set your hands for wheel pose. Wherever you are, breathe for three. Two, one, lower down slow. Again, let your spine rolling down be a really lovely counter pose. Let the hips land, bring the legs up, arms up, relax. <clears throat> one more time, got this. If you're practicing with someone at home, give them a high five. We got this. Merly, we got this, babe. So ground your heels, lift your hips, tuck under your shoulders. Bridge pose, or set your hands. Last time. Five. Four. Three. Two. And one more breath. Exit down slowly with some control. Lower back comes to the ground. Let your hips just land. Breathe into the lower back. Ha. We're going to soup the bottom, konasana. So soles of your feet together, knees out wide. Rest a hand on your belly, one on your chest. Close your eyes. Really allow your body to land here. Feel the gentle rise and fall as you inhale up your belly. 
into a gap into our feet from back bending. Appreciate all of it. Slowly bring the knees together. And draw them in towards your chest. A little motion like roll around, make circles on your lower back. Do that a couple times each way. And we'll come back to center gradually. Happy baby, which could be hands on your knees, could be hands on your feet or your ankles. Have it so your head's on the ground and your spine is relaxed. And just let your whole body sink in here. If it feels good to do any variation, like a straight legs, do that. Bring the knees back in together. And we'll do some hip openers. So if you know that you like to practice um, pigeon on your back, so figure four, stay where you are, left foot down, right foot ankle on your left thigh. So right foot crossed. And draw the leg in. Come into this sort of version. If you want to come into traditional pigeon pose, you might feel great to come from downward facing dog. Move your way through there. Take a vinyasa if you're feeling the, the desire. And we'll step the right knee to your right wrist. Center left leg back long behind you. And feel free to use any kind of props, towels, blankets, anything you have to help support your posture. You can take a couple of rests upright. It's kind of my favorite. It really gets into the front of the left hip. And then as you're ready, we'll come forward and down. You rest on your arms. Rest your forehead down. It's going to land in a positioning where you can relax. Just draw the focus of your breath. Draw your attention to your focus on your breath. Soften your jaw. Keep your thoughts in this moment right here. Keep your thoughts in the sensation in your body and focus on that. Breathe into that. If you're someone that has a challenging time meditating, uh, utilizing your physical practice is a great entryway. So just focusing your attention on sensation and breath is a great way to start to train your mind to be more one-pointed focus. And over time, it gets a little easier, a little easier. You just kind of tiptoe right into that practice. Just give yourself a few more moments. If there's any way you'd like to deepen the pose, you might go there. You might just stay right where you are. Breathe. And gradually press into the hands, curl the toes under if you are in this pigeon pose. And lift the hips up to downward dog. It can feel fabulous to send that right leg to the sky and really straighten it, open. You might bend the knee. Anything that feels right for you, I want you to do. And gradually we'll go to side two. So if you're on your back, take your left ankle to your right thigh, figure four. Pigeon pose, left knee, left wrist, eventually. Walk your hands back. Send the right leg long behind you. Spend a couple of moments upright first. Time, make your way down forward into a reclining pigeon. And one of the most important like features of this pose is to allow the hips to be more square. So if your left hip is not on the ground, don't fret. Allow your hips to be more level first. That's where a little support can come in handy. Kind of take the pressure off the knee.
few more breaths. Any way you want to deep it, I want you to go there if you have it already. Just twist, shift. Eventually, a pigeon come up to your hands, curl the back toes under, send your hips high to down dog. Pedal the feet out, send the left leg up, open the hip, do what feels really good right now for you. And that could also be coming through a high plank to a low plank. For your back, and especially up dog, the front of your hips after pigeon is fabulous. Back in a seated position. You can step, you can jump, come through to seated. Extend your legs out in front of you. The posture called Dom Dawson, a staff pose. So take your hands right by your side, palms flat. So depending on the length of the arms and the torso, it's a little bit different on each of us. So just roll your shoulders back and down. If you have longer arms than me, you might have to bring your hands back and bend your elbows. But keep this nice line of stacking ears, hips. Hug your legs together, draw the toes in. This one is really like full activation of everything you could possibly think of in your body. So do that, breathing. Eliminate your heart. Give it one more breath. Keep all this activation, send your arms over your head, inhale, softening your knees is totally allowed. We're gonna come forward folds. So hands might catch your feet, let you should towel, balls of your feet or a strap. Softening the knees gives you a bit more access to this pelvic tilt. And that's where you want to move forward through as opposed to this, like how that hurts the low back. It's not good. So keep the knees soft if necessary so you can create a bit of a forward tilt to the pelvis. Good. And every time you breathe, keep the lengthening of your spine as opposed to collapsing. So you want to create this length in the back of your body, whole back of your body, deep breathing. If your legs are on the ground, like if your legs are more straight, press them down. And if it's a slight bend in the knees, press down your heels and draw forward. So three deep breaths. Two more. Breathe in, spin up, release your strap. So now we're at the point where we're going to take our feet up in the air. So I'm not going to break down headstand or shoulder stand. So if you practice those or handstand, any inversion, I want you to feel like, of course, this is your house and your time. Go for it. I'll cue you through more of a supported, restorative inversion. If you happen to have a block or you could use a pillow or nothing, but scooch on forward. Lift your hips up, take the block underneath your tailbone. I always like to tuck under my shoulders like I'm getting into bridge pose. Feels kind of good. And then take the legs up to the ceiling. That's it. Arms can be like a cactus pose rendition. It might feel good in your shoulders for you. But it could be any placement that allows you to relax. So we'll take a couple minutes. So whatever inversion you're practicing, give yourself time to move through any variations or to stay feel still. You all in this restorative version, close your eyes. And just feel that complete support from the earth beneath you. And every time you exhale, allow your body to become a little more heavy. Another like 45 more seconds. If 
you are in a headstand. Make your way slowly down into a pike position or a bent knee tuck position. If you feel pretty spry, you can take your legs back up again and do that as many times as you'd like. The rest of us, bend the knees, bring your feet on the floor. Lift your hips up, take away the block. You want your low back to settle. Huh. Give your knees a hug into your chest one more time so you can squeeze. Drop both knees to your left side and pull them up towards your left shoulder. Send your right arm over to the right side and just gaze over your right shoulder. Just circulate a few good deep breaths. Switch sides. Consciously kind of draw the knees up, spin the left shoulder open, look over that left shoulder. Center, one final squeeze in. And we move towards a Shavasana. Straighten your legs out all the way. Take up a lot of space on your mat. If you have any props at home that you want to use, feel free to prop up your, your knees or legs up wall. And spend some time in Shavasana. You'll give yourself five, 10, heck, give yourself 30 minutes, it's perfect. And just give yourself a chance to relax and ground. And when you're ready to come up, come up. No rush. I will sign off and you can stay till we come back and meet again. Thank you for joining me today. Namaste.